today's three-point edit tutorial I'm going to be looking at reprojecting photos onto 3D geometry and we're going to do that with photogrammetry. This image I grabbed with my telephone and used the wonderful program, uh, the wonderful add-on I should say, Blender Camera Calibration Toolkit, better known as Blam. And Blam's great if you grab the, the add-on from the GitHub, it's down there, download, and install that in Blender. Have a look at the user preferences. Here it is 3D Toolkit. If we go to the Motion Tracker, you'll notice this tab on the side called Miscellaneous has the Blam add on tools. Now, if we go and open an image, so if we grab the background image, here it is, wall shot, have a quick look at the thumbnail view. And this is the image that we're going to be um, calibrating from for our 3D view. Make sure that in our scene, we actually have a camera, that's most important, for the uh, add-on to uh, modify. Now, the first thing we need to do is give the add-on, blam add-on, something to construct the 3D space from. So it needs a couple of converging lines, or a few converging lines, in both X and Y axes. So let's begin by adding a grease pencil. And we go down the side to grease pencil, make sure it's turned on. We want a new grease pencil object and a new layer. We're going to make the stroke color something obvious, like green. And I'm going to hold down the Control and D key and click and drag out a straight line, like that. And we need another parallel straight line. So Control and D key. Now we have two lines that should converge in the distance and give us the uh, perspective for one of our vanishing points. Let's add another layer so that over here on the Blam add-on tool panel you can see we need another axis. So let's change the stroke color to something else, nice and pink, and Control and D key to drag out another line. Make sure that they're as close to those lines as possible for their convergence to work. And now we simply solve that by clicking on Calibrate Active Camera. Now I'll jump out of full screen mode and you should be able to see that occur up here in 3D view. So click on Calibrate Active Camera. And you'll notice that now the camera is pointing in a different direction to what it was before and that it has a different field of view than what it had before. Also, that the the image that we have here is now being used as a background image for this camera. So its orientation and position in space should match our image. And press the N key and go to properties. Let's have a look at the background image. Turn on the background image. We're going to add an image. We're going to use the movie clip. Which movie clip was it? It's wall shot. There it is. Now that may not look like very much at the moment because it's just a background image. However, if we add, say, a cube into our scene, where is our cube hiding? There it is. And we place that in view. Oops. Oops, zero key. What we should find is that we can actually locate the cube in our space correctly. We should be able to make an elevator. It goes perfectly follows all of the convergent lines and parallel lines in this scene. So our solve was very good with the Blam add-on. Now what I need to do is turn this cube, turn it into the geometry that I can project our um, image onto. Let's go into edit mode and remove some of these vertices. Don't need that, don't need that. I really just want an L shape. Back to projected view. Move it back so it lines up with our object. Sorry, lines up with our texture. And what I might do is place the cursor at that location as well. So snap, shift S to snap the cursor to the selected item, which is the vertex, and then we'll go shift Control c and we want to snap the center of the object to the cursor. 
So now any scaling that we do will occur from this point in space. I guess I could have just used the cursor to do that, but anyway. We want to make sure that all of the geometry completely covers our field of view as much as possible. So we'll keep scaling that up. If we have a look at this, you can see that our camera is now in that space. So the next thing we need to do is unwrap our 3D geometry in a UV map. So let's make another window. UV image editor. Because it's not a movie clip, we're going to have to reopen our wall shot and load it as an image. In our 3D view, we want to unwrap this from view. So now you can see that our image is reprojected just the same as it was in the camera view. Now there should, there's one thing I'll, I'll mention that you may, fo may find, as I did, that if your 3D object If your 3D object encloses the camera so that you don't actually have boundaries on the camera, when you unwrap, when you unwrap the, um, the 3D object, you get a strange corruption over here in the UV image. So let's do that, unwrap from view. See how you get this overlapping plane? That's actually this plane out here that doesn't know where to go because it goes around behind the camera. As you can see, the camera is there. So you must make sure that what you're unwrapping occurs in front of the camera plane. Let's just put that back where it was. Go to O for the camera project. Tab to edit mode. U for unwrap. Project from view. And we'll get our correctly unwrapped image. Now, we're not actually looking at the, the material yet. So we'll chop, change over to material view. We'll change our material. Add our texture. Oh, and I should mention this is all in the Blender renderer. Um, I don't really need to use cycles as I'm going to be pre um, predominantly using OpenGL to render this image. So we want to use the UV image um, unwrap for the for the coordinates for the image, and we want to open the wall image that we've already been using. Now, if I change the material to shadeless, you'll be able to see the result. If I go into render mode with Shift Z, you'll notice that this unwrap hasn't been very successful. The reason for that is that there is not enough geometry to successfully unwrap, to reproject onto. So let's try adding more geometry. If we subdivide that surface, make it simple, and we apply, whoops out of edit mode, we apply that subdivision. Now, you'll see that there are a lot more points of geometry to unwrap. So, press U, unwrap that again, project from U, you get this much, much denser mesh for the um, image to be projected onto. Let's jump back, out of tab, tab out of edit mode, we'll jump back to our image, Shift Z, and now you can see that's doing a much better job of reprojecting our image. Let's subdivide that again and see if we can't clear up this edge here. I'm going to apply that again. Now we have another dense mesh. Hopefully we can reproject this better. Yes, there we go. So now our image fits up against the boundaries of the camera view. And we have a nice clean display of the uh, texture on our 3D geometry. Now, if we want to project um, light onto this geometry, it's going to be no good to have it shadeless. So let's turn up Emit instead, and we can have something approaching the surface that we were using before, but we can still add lights to this surface. You'll notice also that around the geometry, it, the image is being rewrapped um, outside of the boundaries of the, f the field of view of the camera. So the field of view of the camera, if I change the size of the camera, 
you should see that the camera actually follows through that projection completely. Unfortunately, we don't have a light cone like we do with lamps, but you get the idea that it follows that projection perfectly. What we can do on our, on our geometry, though, is change the nature of the um, repeated image. So if we go up to image mapping, we can turn off repeat and maybe use extend. But in OpenGL mode, we won't see that. We'd have to be in rendered mode to see that. So in, in camera view, looks fine. And then off the edges, we get this more deliberate streaking effect. But that might be better to look at if you accidentally shoot off than the repeated image. But in OpenGL, of course, we won't see any of that. So it's probably not relevant. In part two of this short tutorial series, I'll be looking at the animation and projection of images into our newly created 3D space. And don't forget, hit subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching.